Hi there, I'm Miriam and welcome to Miriam's Manor. You guys, I am so very excited because I have finally completed my vineyard for my 2021 Christmas Village and I am absolutely in love with it. I love the way it turned out. It might just be my favorite piece that I have ever created. And all of this was inspired by villages of all seasons. If you guys did not see my last video on how to make grapevines, I mentioned her also in that video as well. I have put her Instagram information for you guys right here below on the bottom of the screen. Please check out her Instagram page. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. She comes up with beautiful and creative ways to use household items to create village scenes. And most of these things that I've seen on her page are definitely things that we all usually have in our house anyway. So if she ever gets a YouTube page, I will follow up with you guys and let you guys know that information because I think that she definitely has great information to share and definitely something to offer to the village community. So with that being said, um, let's go ahead and get started on this video. I did include a materials list in the description box of all of the materials that I used here on this project today. And I also did provide some of the links for items that might be a little bit harder to find. But if I forgot something, you guys always keep me honest. Just let me know and I'll get that updated in the description box for you. So check this out and let me know what you think. Okay, to begin, I have several pieces of styrofoam sheets already cut to size. So the first thing I am going to do is take this Elmer's white glue and glue all of these pieces together except for the very last piece at the top there. So this is my last piece of styrofoam. You can see I've drawn all over it, trying to put a plan together for where I want everything to go. However, this is not the final draft, but I do at least know where I want my walk path to go. So I am going to take my hot knife and go ahead and cut that out. I glued down the last piece of styrofoam on the top and applied heavy objects while all of these pieces are drying. And I'm going to allow at least three hours of drying time for this and come back to it. Now I am drawing lines where I want my slope to be to access the top of the vineyard. I will draw these lines up top and I will also draw some on the sides and follow these lines. I will go back and forth between using my hot knife and my sculpting tool from Hot Wire Foam Factory to carve out this slope. Next, I am taking this sandpaper to sand the top of the slope. This will remove the ridges from the top surface, but also it creates a pebble-like finish to the surface that looks like rocks when you're done painting it. So I will be using a Limax product for mine, but I also wanted to show you this way if you didn't want to purchase additional items. Also, you can save the little piece of styrofoam bits that you see collecting here for your grapes if you're going to make grapevines. Now I am drawing my outline for my pond. I will have a two-tiered pond with a small waterfall pouring down into the bottom area. I try not to carve into my styrofoam when I'm making a water feature. Instead, when I'm able, I like to add a thin piece of styrofoam to create the pond border. So I am taking some black paint to create an outline and imprinting that onto the piece of the border styrofoam that I will be using so I know how to cut the shape out. So 
So this is the shape of my leg. So I am going to cut the excess off from around this and glue this down as the border. I am applying my heavy weight to this while this dries and I'm going to do the exact same thing to the pond down below. Now I am taking my Hot Wire Foam Factory Sculpting Tool and I'm going to soften some of these hard edges on this piece. I am also adding a walk path that will lead to an elevated deck area. So I am starting the walk path by taking my hot knife and creating a shallow line along the path that I have drawn out. And now I am going to create my rock formations for the sides of this piece. So as you can see here, I am using all different types of shapes and sizes of styrofoam scrap. Now some are thinner, some are thicker, and that's what really helps you create a more natural look to your rock formations. So I have my bowl of white glue here and I am just dipping these pieces in the white glue and sticking it on to the side. It will stay there on its own until it dries in place. So I am just going to go through around this entire piece and do this and I will let this dry for about an hour before I come back to it. So I will give you a quick view of how everything is coming along so far. All of the rock formations are added and dried and here is a close-up of that walk path where you can see that pebble-like finish that I was telling you about earlier. I have also added peaks to the front of the pond so that the water will cascade down around these rocks here. It is now time to plaster and I have my plaster strips cut and this is the brand that I ordered off of Amazon. I also have my bowl of water ready so to apply I am going to quickly dip the strips into the water and start from the top down. So I will push the strips into some of the crevices to create a sharper looking rock in some areas and then loosely apply the strips in other areas to have more of like a bulky looking rock. I also will run my wet fingertips over the surface of the strip to smooth it out and to fill in the holes. Now I will also be using a liquid layer of plaster for my second layer so I'm not as concerned about taking away all of the holes in my plaster strips. But if you are only using plaster strips to plaster your piece, make sure to try to eliminate all of the holes that you can in the first layer. And then whatever you don't get in the first, try to just remove those in the second layer. The second layer of plaster strips you add is a lot easier than the first layer because the first layer is already hard, so it does give you something easier to smooth over for that second layer. Before I plaster the pond, I am going to seal the area first with some white glue. So I did mine backwards. I should have actually done this step before I did all of the other plaster. That way this would have been dry by the time I was ready to plaster the pond. But I am applying a generous amount of white glue to this and I am going to give it about an hour to dry. And I will do this to the top and bottom pond. The glue is dry so now I am just going to add my plaster strips to this top area. Now this is really important to make sure that you eliminate every single hole from this pond area. You don't want your realistic water to seep through any of these cracks. So if you need to end up applying three layers to this, just apply the third layer, better safe than sorry because the realistic water is an expensive product and you don't want to uh, lose that and have it seep into the styrofoam. So make sure you do a really good job covering all your holes in this plaster. While my plaster is drying, I will work on the elevated deck area of the vineyard. So I am going to take my X-Acto knife and carve a stone pattern into the styrofoam. And I'm going to begin on the outer ring first and work my way to the center ring. Now I will apply the plaster of Paris, which is the second layer of plaster. So I have a half cup measuring cup and I will apply two parts of powder 
and one part of room temperature water. I will mix this together very well and quickly because you only get about five minutes to apply this before it hardens. The thinner the consistency, the longer application time you have. So if your mixture ends up as thick as peanut butter, I would add a little bit more water to it so it gives you enough time to apply it. Now it is time to make the stairs that lead to the very top portion of this landscape. I have drawn this stair pattern out to have a landing in the middle. So I will take my hot knife and follow my stair pattern. To attach the piece, I am adding white glue to the bottom and the back portion of this styrofoam piece. Then I am going to take a wooden toothpick, break it in half, and insert it into the back piece of the platform, and I will slide the stairs into place from there. It is now time to paint, so I am starting with my Apple Barrow black paint that I picked up from Walmart and starting with my black wash. So I am adding a good amount of paint to this mix because this piece is large. So when you mix your black wash, you wanna use about 70% paint and about 30% water. Mix it well and paint it on. Now I am going to paint almost the entire surface of this piece except for the top. The only things I'm painting up top on that surface will be the walk path and the elevated deck. The second layer of paint that I will add is the Apple Barrel brand as well from Walmart in the color Burnt Umber. And I am wetting the tip of my brush and going to dab this off to the side and just lightly brush the front surface of the rocks. I am just going to go in a soft sweeping motion and I am not worried about covering the entire black surface. I will be adding about four additional layers of paint and with each additional layer of paint that I add, it will cover more and more of the black surface. I am adding paint to this walk path to show you how it looks if you want to use this as an option. Just continue adding lighter colors of paint in layers until you reach the color you desire. Before I attach the elevated deck portion, I am going to apply the black wash to this first. The reason I am doing this is because I did create bricks on the side of this piece and it would be very difficult to make sure the black wash seeps in on the sides if it's already attached. So I'm going to apply the black wash first attach it and then finish out the rest of the paint job. This vineyard will be gray to match the other pieces in my village and I have already mixed my first layer of dark gray paint. So I am going to add that everywhere else where I have already painted and I am also applying it in the same manner, just wetting the tip of my brush and lightly stroking over the surface of the rocks. I added more white paint to the darker color of gray that I had previously mixed and I am going to apply this in the exact same way that I did the first few layers. I have mixed my final layer of gray paint by just adding more white to the previous mix and I am going to also apply this one in the exact same way. And last but not least, it's time to add the snow detail. So I have a cap full of white paint and a very fine paintbrush, and I am gently dabbing the surface of the protruding rocks. So I decided that I wanted an elevated hill up top, so I cut this shape out and I am going to glue this down. I also have not yet glued down my elevated deck, so I'm going to take these two pieces together, rub them with some glue, and stick them both on. And because I don't want to have to wait for this to dry completely before I decorate, I am adding some floral pens to this to hold it in place while it sets and dries. I picked up this moss mat from Michaels and I am going to use it to cover almost the entire top surface of this piece. So you can remove the white paper backing to get to the sticky part and use that to stick down onto this. I will do that as well as use some white glue to secure this down.
To take away the sharp edges of the mat, I bought the exact same moss but in the loose version and I'm going to apply this with some regular white glue and I'm just going to run this kind of in a staggered pattern down the sides of the mountain to make it look more natural. This is how my hill turned out from the front and now I am going to apply this Lee Max landscaping mat to put down before I add my grapevines. So I'm just going to run some regular white glue in this area, cut the mat to the size that I need and just apply it on. I went ahead and applied the rest of the moss to the areas that I wanted to cover and I still have a little bit more that I need to do but first I am going to set my grapevines in place and finish that part up. And now I am going to complete this top portion by adding more moss to the front so that I can cover up that harsh line of the Lemax landscaping mat. I've mixed about a quarter size of Christmas green paint and put two dots of black in it to use as the deeper portion of both areas of my pond. And I will begin to mix some lighter shades from there and blend these colors together. So I'm going to do that by taking what is existing left in my little bowl and adding white to it, mixing it together and layering the colors. So one little tip that I want to give you guys when you are painting your lake and trying to get your waters to blend, you want to make sure that you have two brushes for this process. You want to have one brush that you are applying with and then one brush that you are blending with that is completely dry. I struggled a little bit this day and I put paint on and took it off and kept adding it and taking away and things like that because my dry brush wasn't completely dry so all it was doing was pushing wet paint around instead of blending the colors together so make sure you get a completely dry brush when you are blending your colors from darkest to lighter on that outer rim. So I finally got my colors the way I wanted them so I'm going to let this dry and then spray it with some top coat to seal the paint. I am using another strip of my Lemax landscaping mat for the gravel pathway. I already cut it to size and I will be using white glue to attach it. Before I pour my realistic water, I want to get my foliage all set that I am going to be adding around this pond. So I'm adding these tiny pink flowers and some other florals and bushes that I picked up from Amazon. So I'm just using my hot glue gun to attach all of these because I did plaster over this section. Next I am going to add some cattails around the lake and also a few inside the lake. And to do that I am going to use this glue here, my quick grip that I picked up from Walmart. And also this glue eats away at styrofoam that is not covered and protected so do not use it on your styrofoam but it is safe to use on the plastered areas. You just need to hold it in place for a little bit for it to set up and harden just a little bit. So the next flowers that I'm adding I also picked up from Amazon but I want to say thank you to my mother first because she was the one who actually found these and put these in her village and I went over to her place recently and saw them and absolutely loved them so of course I had to buy some too and they were pretty affordable and I just really feel like they're the perfect size for village landscapes so this is also in the description link as well if you guys want to add these little cuties to your village too. 
So now it is finally time for me to pour my realistic water. So I am going to pour both layers at the same time. Now, one of the things that I want to remind you guys when using this product, you can only pour one eighth of an inch at a time for it to properly dry. And you want to allow 24 hours of drying time as well for it to properly harden and solidify. Also, do not shake this bottle at all because you will end up with air bubbles in your finished product. If for some reason you do see some bubbles right after your finished pouring, just take a lighter to it and it will pop the bubble. You cannot pop the bubble by using a sharp object like a toothpick or something. Trust me, I've tried it. So um, just take a flame to it and it'll pop that bubble for you so you'll have a smooth surface when you're all done. The other thing that I also wanted to mention was I know that you guys are used to me adding a little bit of food coloring to my realistic water. I did not do that for this time because I didn't want my water to have a blue effect. I wanted to keep it more greenish in color. So um, this is it now that it's all poured and now I'm just going to wait for it to harden. So I will see you guys in another 24 hours. While I am waiting for my water to harden, I will also create my waterfall so it can harden and dry at the same time. I am using the Woodland Scenics water effects for this, so I am just squeezing a few lines right next to each other on this glass plate. So after years of making these, I really have found that making these on glass works best. It's easiest to lift them up. Some people use foil or um, wax paper I've done that in the past but the glass really does work the best so if you have a plate that you don't mind using or a mirror um, it'll save you a lot of headache from this product sticking to the back surface of whatever you've applied it to now I'm just going to take my nippers and run lines through it to give it the effect of rushing water you can also use toothpicks for this process. You can really use anything that has a pointy end that will create little lines through this product. So it's been almost 24 hours, so I am going to pull off these waterfall strips that I made. They're not all the way dry yet, but they are mostly dry to work with and use, and they can dry the rest of the way after I attach them. So, I have removed them from the plate. This is what it looks like in that creamy area. You can see where it's still a little wet, but again, it'll be fine. To attach the waterfall, I am using the exact same water effects product. I'm going to put a small amount of it on the lip of the cliff and press the waterfall to it. I will hold this down for about 60 seconds for it to take hold. To attach it to the bottom, I'm using the same product, the water effects, but I am adding them in peaks because I want this to hit the bottom of this like rushing water spilling over. So I want it to have that foamy frothy look. So I am making these peaks for it to sit on in the back of it. And I will also add some to the front as well. Now I am going to take my fan paintbrush and I am going to blend these little peaks together a little bit better so that they will look more like crashing waves. And I'm also going to spread it a little bit further away from the waterfall so that it looks like rippled water. This will eventually dry completely clear, but I do notice that it does take several days to do so. Um, in the past, it takes anywhere from two to three days for these ripples, especially at the base where the water falls, um, to completely dry clear, especially just because that it is a lot thicker in that area. So um, after 24 hours, don't freak out if it's still a little white. Um, that's normal. Give it another 24 to maybe 48 hours and it'll be just fine.
So here is a close-up and I will be back in a couple of days to show you all how it all turned out. So this is the finished result, you guys. I absolutely love it. You will notice there is a wooden fence along the front and I will be releasing a video on how I put that together very soon. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I had a great time making it. I hope that it offers you some different out of the box inspiration on things that you can do with your Christmas village. Also, immediately following this page, I am going to post some platforms that I have for sale on my Etsy page and provide that link for you guys as well to my page. So if you're interested in buying a custom made Miriam's Manor piece, you can um, go visit me there on that Etsy site. So if you guys have any questions for me, as always, leave me a line in the comment section and I will get back with you. And until I see you again, stay safe. God bless you and I hope to see you soon. Bye.